uh, browse through the French papers. Dipti's uh, with us here on stage. It's going to start with a wave of protests. Mentioned this in the news that are due to hit France. Once again, those Labour reforms uh, at, uh, uh, to blame for this, if you like, Dipti. Well, after the summer break, the protesters are back. Mm. Uh, the communist paper L'Humanité reports on its front page that a wave of protests, marches and strikes are going to unsettle pretty much all of France today. They're calling, as you mentioned, for the controversial labor reforms to be repealed. Now, those labor reforms, as we know, had already been voted in uh, before the summer break. So many might be wondering, what is the point of this ongoing action? Mm. Uh, well, Le Monde, uh, the newspaper, says that protests Protesters are actually hoping to take this battle to the courts now, uh, notably the constitutional court, and try and argue that some of the reforms may be cons unconstitutional, but that still remains to be seen. And these reforms were deeply unpopular, weren't they, with the Socialist Party, traditional voters, also with civil servants and, and just workers in general, weren't they? That's right. Hollande's government has somewhat isolated its traditional voting base with these labour reforms, civil servants, government workers and labourers. And in this vacuum, these groups are being increasingly courted by the Front National Far Right Party in France. Look, Le Parisien calls it uh, the, uh, tempta the Front National temptation. The newspaper says that gov Hollande's government is well aware of this, uh, this temptation and is planning to make concessions to sort of bring those voters back to the Socialist Party. But many people doubt if this will even be effective, really, because it seems like there is sort of a divorce within the party that's already taking place. Now, I want to show you this cartoon by Ranson uh, in Le Parisien, where you have a, a man uh, saying he'll vote for the far-right party because there are uh, no more jobs, while uh, there's a group in the middle saying, uh, we have too much work, so we're going to vote for the Front National Party. Uh, and, and really, there's uh, in that cartoon, you see that person on the right saying, well, I think many of us are wondering, how does the Front National Party manage to sort of court people from such different sides of the political spectrum? The yeah, idea we're going to keep talking about the National Front because they're growing popularity, benefiting from divisions within the Socialist Party and other left-leaning groups, also for the, for the Centrist Party. Well, Les Echos has dedicated its editorial this morning to what it calls the François Hollande-Emmanuel Macron battle that's sort of playing out since uh, Macron resigned as finance minister. Now, the, the financial paper actually wonders who's going to win this mm. battle. As we know, Emmanuel Macron resigned and, uh, you know, through his movement, the En Marche movement, he's been rather politically ambiguous. Uh, now, that movement he launched last, uh, earlier this year and it claims that it's neither right nor left-leaning. And that's made one person in France a little nervous, and that's François Bayrou, who is really the pillar of French centrist politics. He represents the Modem Party. Now, in an interview with L'Opinion, the right-wing uh, paper, Bayrou says he would actually support Alain Juppé as a presidential candidate next year. Alain Juppé is candidate for the right-leaning Les Républicains Party. But Bayrou says he doesn't really exclude himself as uh, out as candidate candidate either, especially if Juppé isn't voted candidate uh, in the Républicain primaries later this year. But uh, Beirou has actually cautioned Emmanuel Macron, saying as long as he's there representing French centrist politics, nobody else will take his place. And there's a great cartoon here by the cartoonist Kak, and you, he likens the situation to a, a Western film, and you see Beirou mm -hmm. uh, telling the young, uh, quote, foreigner Macron that if he wants a horse, he'll have to find his own one. Well, they're a little horse as well looking at that. Um, <laughs> Liberation, they're talking about the idea that maybe the real problem here is just a, a lack of likeable candidates. Likeable and charismatic, that's really the word in this uh, analytic piece from uh, Liberation. Uh, French citizens are looking for their saviour, that's what the article says. The left-leaning paper wonders uh, if the real question here is that French politicians just aren't charismatic. Libé says what people really are looking for, voters uh, are looking for, is a candidate who's a natural leader, a quote, providential person with an obvious aura about him or her, I guess. For the political analyst Aline Garrigou, who's interviewed in this article, the problem today is that the system sort of churns out politician after politician who, quote, are ordinary, banal and really resemble each other.
Well, across the Atlantic, um, Donald Trump is certainly one presidential candidate who really does not leave uh, people indifferent, does he? No, and he's on the front page of Le Figaro this morning with the headline there, Will Trump Win? I guess it's a question we've been asking ourselves <laughs> yeah. for many months now. Exactly, not too long to find out. <laughs> and not too long to find out. Yeah. The Republican presidential candidate has really uh, been taking advantage of Hillary Clinton's ill health to advance his own presidential campaign. Le Figaro... Uh, says it's not entirely impossible that he could win, uh, noting that Trump has sort of changed strategy recently. He's obviously, in the last, in the, since the beginning of his campaign, he's played to provoke, to irk, to offend, and we're starting to see this shift in his strategy towards somebody who's more uniting, somebody who's trying to play to the popular vote, lead a more positive campaign. But it obviously remains to be seen if it's too little too late. Uh, in any case, let's end with this cartoon by Willem, uh, also in Liberation, with uh, a man looking at the portraits of Hillary Clinton and Trump saying, we will have to choose between the plague and pneumonia. <laughs> it's a play on words of the French idiom to choose between the play, uh -huh. uh, plague and cholera. Uh -huh. In other words, uh, choosing the lesser of two evils. OK, six weeks to go. Uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll, well, I know we'll be covering it uh, a lot, of course, uh, between now and then and those elections when they happen in six weeks' time. Thanks very much, Dipti.